name is Monica Gleberman, and you're listening to Silence On Set Podcast. On today's podcast, we're talking to the cast of The Consultant, which is a twisted comic thriller that explores the sinister relationship between boss and employee. Based on Bentley Little's 2015 novel of the same name, the characters and story in this thrilling new series unfold in new and unexpected ways. Here's our first exclusive clip from The Consultant Season 1 called One Hour. Good morning, comrades. Unfortunately, Mr. Sang cannot be with us today, but he sends his best regards to the wonderful faces I see below. Thank you for being an important part in Comfort's success. I'm looking forward to getting to know you all personally. You're valued. And for those who work remotely, you have exactly one hour to get here in person or your contracts of employment will be terminated. That's all. So to start us off about the show and what we can expect, here's Nat Wolf, Brittany O'Grady, and Amy Carrero. I wanted to ask you guys, you know, it's so multi-layered. So when you got this script, was it hard to break down where you're going to focus, what like certain marks you want to hit? Like just was it difficult in that sense? I actually think in a, in a strange way, the, the writing was so clear. The characters were so clear that, you know, like when I first read the pilot, I was just immediately thrown into this world. And uh, and then that twist at the end, I was like, I screamed in my apartment. I was like, I have to be part of the show. But the, the character of Craig was on the page so clear and the dialogue was so um, evocative and uh, funny. And in a strange way, it let you, it did a lot of the work for you, which the best writing does. It, it, it took care of you as an actor. I felt like Elaine for me was a little bit elusive at first because they wanted her to evolve and be impacted I have this expression, it probably doesn't sound very graceful, but I take characters in chunks when they do that. So it, she's just made up of all the choices that she makes and how she does it and how she reacts to other people. And so that was really fun for me. And I don't really know who Elaine is at times. I know her feelings. I don't she know doesn't know who she is, maybe. I, <laughs> but there are aspects of her that have so many layers and um, ways that she's impacted by her surroundings and is a problem solver. And then also are vulnerable, I would say vulnerable to trying to make what she wants happen um, right. with success or validation or peace. Well, so when I, when I signed on to do the show, I'd spoken to the, to Tony Bascallop, our, our creator and showrunner, and he was able to give me an idea of where he was going to go with Patty. So I knew going in, even though uh, Patty doesn't go on the journey until kind of halfway through, I knew that it was going to be a situation where we took somebody who really thought she knew who she was and really understood the path she was on. And it ended in her worst possible nightmare, which is now I have nothing and I'm starting over. That was really interesting to me. I love to watch TV shows and movies about characters that sort of start somewhere and end in another place. And so that was made clear to me from the from the beginning. And that was really great. But yeah, I think Patty doesn't really see Craig. Sorry, Nat, I took your I took your line. He's stealing my line. Just that one. Her husband and wife, like almost husband and wife. She thinks she knows, but she doesn't really know. And so when she's faced with the reality of things, I think things fall apart really quickly. So yeah, she's fun to play because of that. And this show is so original. I mean, like, I've never seen anything close to what I witnessed and am semi-scarred from. So (laughs) for you guys, was that fun? Because it's so hard to find original content. So was that fun for all of you guys to, you know, be a part of? I love how, um, how destabilizing it is. And and, and when you do something original like that, it is shocking in the best way. You know, we're, we're, we're kind of programmed to want things that comfort us, you know, and comfort food and comfort shows and comfort like and and a lot of times we need to be uncomfortable you know in order to grow it, it's not a good feeling but it's a feeling that needs to happen in this show you know what pat off does to these characters i think this show does too when you watch you're forced to look at yourself in a way even if it's subconsciously that is really unique and what are you guys hoping are there any specific scenes that you really want fans to like kind of look out for that you could tease I, now I, I, for you i know right off the bat which is related to a car and i'm sure you know what i'm talking about so you did a fantastic job in that car scene that's all i'll say yeah i love uh, i love that episode. 
that that episode was really really like when we got that episode we all text each other like oh my god this it was like training day collateral mixed with like it's kind of sultry yeah. <laughs> and i got a compliment from christoph and he texted us like christoph gave me a compliment and it was just like the highlight you know That's so embarrassing <laughs> I would text my whole family because he's like such an, uh, like a European actor, very prepared and very kind and warm. I mean, Academy Award winner giving you a compliment. Like, I'm going yeah, to talk Yeah, he goes, and he said, you were sensational. And like, a, with a long in between, you know, a long beat in between. This is a win. Yeah, that's a win. We're all celebrating that win. But I think like, as far as a theme that I'm really interested in, and I think that we're seeing a lot of that, that sort of theme is like, you know, maybe as a society, we wonder like, how can such huge, large swaths of the population population be completely brainwashed by a very small amount of people. And I think that this show kind of sheds a little bit of light into that, right? If you catch people right at the right moment in their life or the wrong moment of their life, and you have power, you have influence, you kind of have them by the balls, you know, under this like sort of, if you quit this job, you won't be able to pay your rent, et cetera, et cetera. I think that, you know, we can very easily fall prey to manipulation and uh, misinformation and things like that. So I, I think that's a really interesting theme, one of the many themes of this show, but it's certainly one sort of like drew me in how do we get to trump how do we get to QAnon? this is how check out this exclusive clip from another episode called glass game craig mr padoff still working that is commendable i'm just uh waiting on a ride home so what is that this this is not really anything yet mm -hmm. explain it to me oh okay um well, it's based on the tensile strength of glass. So you see this blue line here? I've linked this to the URL of a glass load calculator. The thicker the glass, the more you can put on it. So, an elephant, and that's okay. And then, elephant and a rhino, that's still okay. Elephant, rhino, monkey. <laughs> Bad monkey. Where did they go? They just fall to the bottom. What's at the bottom? Could be anything. Could be some metal spikes or trampolines or um, anything. What do you want it to be, Craig? What do you want to find when you stop falling? I want to play. When is it ready? Um, I, maybe we should talk to Elaine first. Elaine? She's your creative liaison. This is sort of what she does so that you and I don't have to do this. Of course, this. Elaine. Between the two of us, I was beginning to wonder what she does around here. Good work. Up next is creator, showrunner, and executive producer, Tony Biscala, who is joined by executive producer and pilot director, Matt Shankman, and executive producer and star, Christoph Waltz. I wanted to ask all three of you, but I'm going to start with you, Christoph, about why this part in particular interested you, because it's a very interesting character for you. And the multi, and this is kind of for everyone, the layers that appear in the show, whether it's the coloring of red, um, whether it's the moral ethic, you know, dilemmas that some of the characters are put into, how you guys kind of put that all together to create this kind of masterpiece show. Since you directed the, the first part of the question to me, the second part answers more or less the first part. It's the multi-layered, multi-colored, multi-faceted, complex and, you know, um, mysteriously deep aspect of the whole thing that, you know, promises several months of interesting exchange between intelligent and capable people in this case. And um, so I tried to find them, but I couldn't find enough reasons not to do it. And what about for you, Matt and Tony, in terms of adding so much extra into the show because it's not just kind of a typical show. There's so many extra layers and I keep trying to catch them. So I watched it multiple times to catch a bunch of the stuff that you guys put in there. I think for me, I think there's an aspect of setup and payoff that you do as a writer is that every time you do something, you want to either dial back to it or you want it to have meaning. Otherwise, why was it there? It'll get cut out in the edit. So, you know, I enjoy that as well. It feels like once you start this, once you write the pilot, you've thrown all these balls in the air and you know you're going to have them in the air for a while and other tricks are going to come in so that's what i love about the job 
really is kind of like giving yourself impossible goals and then trying desperately to reach them. You know, how can I pay this off? Is it possible? You know, sometimes you have to go back and change, but generally speaking, there's that that sense of satisfaction when everything just comes together and you go, yeah, it's almost like I planned that exactly that way. But there's chance and planning that goes in. I'm not sure about Matt and his approach. You know, it's funny. I'm, I'm looking at your, I think it's a mirror behind you. It reminds me of the Compware logo, which is this. It design. does, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which was designed to be sort of a maze. You know, this idea that you you innocently walk in and you find yourself lost in this place. You're not sure you'll ever be able to escape from. And so building a world that that felt like that, you know, with it could be, you know, whether it's the set design or the way we're shooting it or the way the costumes work and how it all plays, that sort of idea of you're going into a world that really exists and that you feel it and that the, it has that energy that's unique and singular to compware and to all the people that work there. That's the joy of what I get to do is to kind of build a world that feels very specific and unique. And then this idea of being lost in that maze and will I ever be able to get out, you know, and, uh, you know, how do I escape? Oh, Christoph, for you, I love the characters you play and they range <laughs> for you. Is it exciting to play someone that's like, like a little fun and mischievous and like you don't really know what's going on? Is that fun for you? Well, what do you think? What, <laughs> what, you know, because that's what it's all about. What's it look like? What? How do you feel about it? What do you think is going on? Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's so good. Like I said, and I know that you EP'd on it. Obviously, Tony, you're the you know creator, showrunner, EP. Like you all have so many things. You know, Matt, you did the pilot direction. You're an EP. So for all of you, I guess my final question is just: was one of the most important things that you wanted to make sure that you included in the show in terms of like an executive producer standpoint and what are you most excited for people to see well, thank you for your enthusiasm i mean that means so much to us you know you you know people are only just beginning to watch it i'm not sure there was anything i personally thought we got to include that that's got to be in there you know things as you go along things change but yeah the, the show was just fun to write you know to watch it come together for me i'm not sure about you guys for me it was entertaining criticism you know and that's a very rare if not unique phenomenon entertaining criticism and to me the ideal combination any better than that i mean i think that's brilliant it has so much to say about the world it's a wonderful reflection of our world but it is super entertaining and you said it too it's original you know and when i read it i think probably christoph felt this too just just like i hadn't seen anything like this before and our televisions are very very busy with so many different kinds of shows and to find something that feels like you haven't seen it before I mean, that's fun to make and i think it's really fun to watch and lastly here's a clip of Patty and Padoff gossiping in one of the upcoming episodes of season one. How are the wedding preparations? Oh, pretty much there. Um, of course, it's down to me to plan the whole circus. Circus? Oh, no, 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 not literally. Oh. <laughs> no, um, the church is booked, the people are invited. Uh, the only thing that could derail us now is if Craig doesn't show up to his RCIA classes. If he cannot show up to work, Oh, I, I know he he looks like he doesn't try half the time, but he's a good guy. I love him. <laughs> well, I don't know Craig very well, but you know what I see in him? Hmm. The love he holds for another. That's so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. You know, you're not at all like he described you. <laughs> I can only imagine the gossip they're spreading about the new boss. Well, you you came at a difficult time. You know, the whole saying thing, it's just horrible. If it helps him to see me as a monster, so be it. Enough about me. I'm interested in you, Patricia. No. What do you do? Well, I work for a plastic surgeon in Beverly Hills. We mostly do body contouring, like sucking stuff out, stretching, removing the odd rib here and there. <laughs> it sounds like it could almost be one of our games. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. How about me? What would you improve? My nose, perhaps? Mm. You look pretty symmetrical to me. And you're in good shape. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed listening to the cast of The Consultant talk about what it's going to be like watching season one and some of the twisted and multi-layer storylines that you can expect. Don't forget that all eight episodes will premiere on Friday, February 24th on Prime Video. So make sure you go and check it out. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you're updated on all of our latest podcasts and head over to our YouTube channel, hit subscribe so you're updated on all of our video content. Oh.